I thought this was funny. So we all know that CNN and I'm just going to play this video because it's like I see so many things that I notice and I don't know if y'all are noticing as well. I don't know if I'm just super sensitive to it, but I thought this was a interesting conversation. Let's take a look. That's not winning them the independent voters. Well, I definitely don't need a history lesson on Oprah. Who's so. <laughs> so this was regarding this was actually I had this video. This is one of those videos I was supposed to play for y'all like last week, but kept putting it towards the end of the show. Um, but that's why we got it now. And it still stands. So this was a conversation that they were having a little bit after um, Kamala Harris had the interview with Oprah, the, the Unite America event, whatever you want to call it. And this was the conversation that happened afterwards. So I thought it was interesting, the dynamics here. But let's take a look. That's not winning them the independent voters. Well, I definitely don't need a history lesson on Oprah, who's black history. There is a Republican consultant. Her name is Whitley Jates over on MSNBC. Shout out to Dave uh, And here she is with some interesting thoughts on uh, Kamala. I can't believe, well, here's something insane from MSNBC. It does happen now and again. Uh, interesting thoughts on Kamala talking to Oprah. And uh, are, are the people turning against Oprah, perhaps? And this is sound of Donald Trump at, at his rally in North Carolina today without Mark Robinson. Mm -hmm. And what he had to say about Oprah? <sighs> Mark Robinson. Mm -hmm. And what he had to say about Oprah? All right. Um, how do I go about this? How do I go about this? How do I go about this? All right. Um, yeah. So y'all know I always call out, like, I, I just don't understand. I do understand, but I, I just want to make sure that I'm not the only person seeing this. Why, when it comes to all these liberals, democratic platforms, that the men that they get on their shows just seem to be very emasculated. I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest and you're not being honest if you don't acknowledge it as well. When it comes to Van Jones crying on TV, and I know there's a few others um, that are typically on here, but there just seems to be a thing when it comes to strong black women and emasculated black men. That seems to be the combination for black people that Democrats and liberals seem to love. Um, strong, strong black women, emasculated black men with the same haircut. Now, nah, let me stop. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Joy Reid. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. That was me. I shouldn't have said that, but let's keep going. Did you see her on Oprah? That's not going to be. That's not going to be president. Oprah didn't know what the hell to do. Oprah was like embarrassed. She went to hide under the table, but she's a professional and she was able to sort of disguise it. No, she wanted to go right under the table. Whitley, why does Donald Trump lie like that? I mean, everybody knows. Come on. I think that there were times during that interview where it looked like Oprah was trying to figure out where VP Harris was going. And I think when you're when we're looking at this circumspectly, when we're talking about battleground states and talking to working everyday Americans utilizing a billionaire who's not dealing with the cost of inflation, with stagnant wages, with stagnant industries is really just out of touch. And I think that's what he really meant to say is that hiding behind Hollywood, as opposed to really just talking about the policies of your administration may not be working specifically in battleground states. That is literally rich, Whitley. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> I, mean, you. I mean, it's wealthy, it's, it's wealthy, it's, 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 it's wealthy, it's, it's wealthy. It's a rich man. Come Come on. A couple Megan, things here. So Oprah is one of the only people who has had been able to have an audience of 20 million people for over many, many years. So I, I mean, she does. She is a professional here and she does have an audience and she knows how to coordinate or how to appeal to wide audiences. The second thing is, is every I'm really tired of all the surrogates and Donald Trump and the um, and J.D. Vance all saying this. That's not what the candidates are saying. That is not what they're doing. They're insulting people personally. They're being mean. They're being really vindictive. They're not sticking to the issues. And if they were sticking to the issues and saying what you think they mean to say, we'd be in a much different race. But they can't control themselves and they just need to be mean and vindictive. And that's. Can I ask y'all a question? Can I ask y'all a question? Is there anything. What has Donald Trump said? Or J.D. Vance said about any of the Democrats, Kamala, Tim Waltz or anybody else 
that is worse than being called Hitler? Is there anything that could be worse than being called Hitler? Like, it, it, there may be. But what I'm asking, what I'm asking, or anything that's going to put you more at harm, put you more in harm's way, sorry, than somebody calling you Hitler. Because everybody seems to complain about Donald Trump. Donald Trump makes little jokes, and he, he says, what did he say the other day about Biden, you know, now has... Uh, mental issues or, you know, because of age. And he said Kamala was born with them, insulting her intelligence. I I didn't really like it. I'm not saying that I hated it. I didn't like him saying that. Um, but he's at his rally. He's doing his pep rally stuff. He's just going off the cuff. It is what it is. But are any of those things worse than the Democrats referring to him as Hitler? I'm just asking not winning them the independent voters. Well, I definitely don't need a history lesson on Oprah, who's black history, um, because I'm very familiar with all that she has done. But what I'm saying is when you're talking to people specifically in a state where the average salary is $49,000, bringing a billionaire up on stage is going to present out of touch, specifically for working class Americans. And let me explain why. It's because the issue that they're talking about does not impact her the same, as opposed to having working class. So once again, she's a Republican strategist. She's sharp. Um, now, I, I don't need I didn't really need her to say the whole history lesson on like, whatever. I got to I got to be fair on both sides. You know what I'm saying? I didn't need her to say that. But I get where she was going because. It's like I, I feel like a lot of times when they have black Republicans that are on a lot of these liberal platforms, whether on CNN or on MSNBC, and it's almost or, or let's say you're going on The View where you have a black person go on The View and they're talking about the, the issues. And Joy Behar just feels that she can speak on behalf of what's best for black people as if she's black, um, as if she's just lived the black experience. And because she's a Democrat, she knows what's best for black people. So I understand her energy when it comes to that. This is what they do with a lot of black Republicans, in my opinion. And I'm glad that she's holding her own and speaking more on and speaking to the realness of the situation and breaking it down exactly what she meant as far as it not being the best look. Kamala Harris going on Oprah to be more relatable with the people in that state as well as throughout the country. I need a history lesson on Oprah, who's black history, um, because I'm very familiar with all that she has done. But what I'm saying is when you're talking to people specifically in a state where the average salary is forty nine thousand dollars, bringing a billionaire up on stage is going to present out of touch, specifically for working class Americans. And let me explain why. It's because the issue that they're talking about does not impact her the same, as opposed to having working class people maybe engaging with her, maybe a town hall forum. She has been utilizing celebrities to promote her campaign as opposed to utilizing working class people or utilizing them to speak to working class people. And there is a disconnect. I don't know. I mean, did you watch the town? I mean, it was a town hall it was a town hall yes. style for he's lying for him and Oprah he's lying. It wasn't a town hall, a town hall. People get to ask questions. The only people that asked questions were already prearranged. They had the people from win with black women, win with black men, um, white guys for Kamala. They had the Hadley, um, the Hadley, the young girl that was 12 years old. Tell her story. They had the people on Zoom asked the question that Kamala Harris was not prepared for as far as like bringing the cost of, of housing and just um, living down. Everything was pre was pre set up like it was already determined what she was going to be asked, who she was going to be asked by. it. Let's be real. You had the Tracy Ellis Ross. You had the Chris Rock. That's not a town hall. They kept going, flashing back and forth to the celebrities. And and um. It, it, that's not a town hall. Have a conversation with people. J.D. Vance and, and Donald Trump. And I actually believe that Tim Waltz is as well. I believe that they are totally fine with answering questions from just common folk in the country. I think that they're perfectly fine doing it. I think even Joe Biden's perfectly fine doing it. He may not be his best or give the best answer now, but I don't think that he's scared to death to do it. Kamala Harris will not accept questions that are not pre-approved that are not just off the cuff. She will not accept those type of questions. She won't even put herself in that type of environment. And that's what's so wild at the fact that she 
in a lot of polls, is still up and still the favorite to become our next president. Winfrey is, I mean, she's not a, a, you know, a talk show host now or a journalist now, but it was like watching Oprah from the, from the 90s. And they- this is what I mean when I talk about emasculated black men. First off, fellas, I don't know, were y'all watching Oprah? This man is telling us, this was like, he's, he's celebrating it and giving it credibility and saying that he liked it because this was like Oprah from the 80s and the 90s. Bro, what? Like, so disconnected. This right here, this entire conversation, what they're having the conversation about, who's having the conversation, who's leading the conversation, is the exact reason why young black men are leaving the Democratic Party and going elsewhere. Look at the Democrats, look at the the, the Democratic men that are represent that are representing the Democratic Party on these platforms, whether it's MSNBC or CNN. Look at them. Why would young black men identify with them? Especially young black men that are heterosexual. Why would they identify? Like this is I guess Joe Biden he stuck to his word because when Joe Biden was was running for for president, he made it very clear and he said his number one priority is the LGBTQ community. And I'm looking around, I don't know what the, this brother's in the LGBTQ community, but I can tell that he is a in, an emasculated black man. That he is very feminine in the, his movements, the way he talks, him, and he watched Oprah. I don't know, I'm a little bit younger than him, so maybe that was a thing. Maybe a lot of men were out here watching Oprah. I don't think my dad was watching Oprah. I don't think my uncles were watching Oprah. I don't think my older cousins were watching Oprah. Maybe I'm wrong. The 80s. And also the polls are closing. So she, clearly she's doing something right because she's meeting people where they are because she is now leading in the polls and she's closing on issues that were Donald Trump's like the economy and immigration. So right. something is working. The polls are a snapshot in time and we I all know that. Yeah, right? She was just down in the polls, specifically losing. with The fact that something is working to me, that says a lot about the intelligence of the American people rather than the intelligence of a Kamala Harris or Donald Trump. The fact that this is working, this strategy that Kamala Harris has implemented, her and her team, the fact that it's working says a lot about our country. And maybe it it proves or or sheds a little light on why we are in the position that we're in right now and why when you have a conversation with the average person, why we're in the position that we're in right now. Let me not go there with African-American men, and this doesn't necessarily help her, when you see her utilizing celebrities in this way, when they want policies, they don't want the performance of Hollywood within their political spheres. I mean, again, if you watched the town hall forum, you heard her talk about policies. All right, there's a couple of funny things there highlighted by the fact that when the white woman tried to chime in about black history, she's like, I don't need to know about that. Shut up, you white bitch. Like, that was very clear. Like, don't you talk about that. And then be- <laughs> Yo, Ruben, funny for that. Ruben, funny these that. people all deal, even the sane ones that show up on MSNBC, because they all deal in identity politics. Oh, yes, I am white and I am a b- and I'm just going to sit there and not. That's one thing. But really, the reason I was showing you that was I think she's right, actually, about the Oprah situation. Congratulations, Kamala. You can get up there and talk with a billionaire who can afford to have her guns and who can afford to survive and thrive, even if the economy tanks and all of the rest of it. All right. I was going to have another video, but it's already 11 o'clock. Um, yo, this was an amazing show. I swear I had so much fun. Um, it seems like it. it's like one of those shows. You know how you play a game and it's like, it's like, yo, it was going so well. And now you keep trying to extend it because something happened and it got in the way. It is what it is, yo. We roll with it. Hopefully this doesn't impact our monetization. Um <laughs> but I guess when, when I end the live, I guess I'll see what's going on. But it is what it is. No matter what happens, we adapt, we evolve. And um, that just is what it is. You know, uh, I, I was having a conversation with my dad the other day and he was telling me that uh, he, he was realizing more and more that, you know, sometimes life's going to throw certain things our way. And the best, the, the, the better off that we can just roll with it and make lemon lemonade out of lemons or not. He didn't say that word for word, but that was the gist of it as far as what I received. Um, The more that we can receive the things that happen to uh, us in our lives and not sulk about it like victims, 
but just, hey, this is the cards that we were dealt. Let's make the most of it. I think that we're all going to be in the best position. In, in, it's Dak. Just want to thank you for checking out our video and visiting the OG Network. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure that you give us a like. And if you're looking to join a community of inspired individuals striving for purposeful abundance, subscribe. And if you're feeling real generous, share the video with some friends and family. All right, I'll see y'all soon. Anyway.